as you might be aware, we at Rebel Bio and SOSV search the world for new, genuinely exciting biotechnology and great founders to propel that biotechnology forward. Nevertheless, we are somewhat taken aback by just how novel and cutting edge some of what we've seen emerging from India in recent times has been. When we look at the science behind Psycho Onco Solutions and the Hyderabad based startup Magellan Life Sciences, we saw something that wasn't an iteration of what had gone before, but technology that really stood by itself. Perhaps we're being a bit naive though, because a recent article in Nature Biotech laid out just what an explosion in biotech entrepreneurship the continent has seen in the last decade and highlighted some of the grand ambitions the country has. India aims to be a global biotech hub by 2020 with a $100 billion biotech industry by 2025. And a measure of that progress has been seen for the last six years since BIRAC, the Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council, was established with over a thousand new companies started. Here to take a talk a bit more about this today is Taslim Sharif Syed, a director of the SeaCamp Incubator. So SeaCamp is a Department of Biotech Government of India initiative with a mandate to foster deep science innovations with societal impact. Good afternoon, Dr. Syed. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Uh, I mentioned earlier that I prepared for our talk today by actually getting out a map of India, and it's difficult to underestimate just how little some of us understand about the country in terms of its size and its cultural diversity. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a bit about the actual biotech startup scene in terms of this geography. Is it located in a certain city? Does it have a, a coastal sort of dynamic, or is it run throughout the country? So I think, uh, as you, uh, you know, rightly mentioned in the introduction, I think there there has been a, a significant surge in, uh, you know, the startup uh, scenario in India in the last five to six years, and uh, it has been very very interesting. In terms of its location, I think it has been uh, it is not necessarily uh, right now, uh, you know, zoomed in in one direction, but. It's fairly spread, but with high in density in places like Bangalore, uh, places like Chennai, Hyderabad, Bombay, and so on. Uh, Bangalore is possibly, uh, you know, possibly very, very ahead in terms of the attracting, uh, exciting people in because of the ecosystem it already had uh, in terms of science ecosystem, universities, institutes, and so on and so forth as well as the ecosystem of investment uh, because Bangalore is the capital of, uh, you know, IT, information technology in India as well. So it has worked in that favor where, you know, knowledge and the investments and so on are there. Uh, the investors, a lot of investors, uh, head offices are in Bangalore as well. So while it is spread across and Bangalore is far ahead, I see that it may actually still get you know, much more dense going forward as the ecosystem requires much more closer interactions and proximity uh, among its players. Mm. And do you see a sort of a, a broad spread of areas covered or does, does India have a particular focus towards one type of biotech now, like digital health or pharma? Yeah. So I, I would say that uh, right now it is very open open field in terms of the areas. Um, a lot of people are attempting a lot of um, a new, uh, you know, uh, possible solutions for uh, problems which they see or they hear or they learn about. But at the same time, broad theme is definitely uh, one thing that has emerged in the last few years is definitely affordable and accessible healthcare because that's a very high importance in terms of you. You see the need around and also in general, India with such a high population requires a very good affordable and accessible healthcare. So there's definitely a trend emerging there. Uh, it also, the re one of the reasons that it actually is also doing well is that it is kind of, if I may say so, it's a, it's, it's a good uh, integration of engineering with uh, science knowledge, the biology knowledge in terms of affordable healthcare, in terms of diagnostics, devices, and so on, which is picking a bit more than others. At the same time, I think there are several uh, interesting uh, drug discovery startups which are doing well. 
there are some agri innovation startups which are doing well and so on but the numbers are not as big as uh, the diagnostics and med devices uh, startup so that's one uh, uh, did, did you, sorry to cross here. I mean, have you found it? Is it's been the difficulty in startup? Did you find it sort of hard to drag people's attention away from sort of the generic or manufacturing sense? Because India, to us, looking across it, has been such a huge producer of generic drugs over the year. I mean, it was the world's largest exporter, with sixteen point four billion dollars, uh, only a year or two ago. So is it is it quite a hard to sort of drag a, 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 an investor's or people's attention away from the generic market towards something more entrepreneurial in terms of startup? No, absolutely, I, I think it's very uh, very interesting that you put it. I uh, you know I may have seen around thousand or more startups myself in the last three to four years. Well, <laughs> I haven't seen a single generic startup. Mm. Okay. Uh, what what? Uh, what what it what I'm trying to say is that people have understood that generics is a game of large scale uh, the late stage industry, which is which has the understanding of large scale production, uh, formulation, cost cutting, making sure US FDA and all that is there. The startups are largely playing much more entrepreneurial nature, much more new ideas on the table, and so on and so forth. So somehow startups have figured out that where they want to be and where they do not want to compete with the established industry. Um, and generics definitely they have understood. However, at the same time, you may want to really say that yes, there are startups which are definitely going to look at biosimilars, which should have the generics flavors to biological drugs. And that could be one where people would definitely look at because that's the opportunity that has not been yet tapped by anyone. It's just early days of biosimilars, and I think uh, next couple of decades will be a, a phenomenal for biosimilars. So yes, there are startups who are looking at from the biosimilars perspective. That's true. Well, what can you point to now? And we've talked about the last six years. I mean, what can you point to now or in those last six years that was different to uh, to what was going on ten years ago in India? I mean, is it an increase in wealth, uh, education? Uh, can you kind of put your finger on what has, has caused this sort of explosion in entrepreneurship? Yeah, so I would say the main difference without a doubt is the uh, the governments which were working from 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12 and so on, they started conceptualizing uh, uh, you know, uh, their own programs where they could support early ideas uh, with risk, which always possibly governments were not ready to put in. So if I may say so, whether it was a kind of SVIR kind of funds or possibly UK based, uh, the way catalyst funds or so on and so forth, uh, which is completely grant based, which would allow scientists either coming from academics or industry or individual who has never been either in academics or industry to seek support for their early ideas and see what they can do with those ideas. And that has been phenomenally game changing in terms because now you not only, of course, people who were determined to come in, become an entrepreneur, they had much more of a reason of kind of risk mitigated beginning to do while rather than bootstrapping, find, finding angel investors, finding institutional investors, which still are not that many and so on. So you actually kind of bypass that huge barrier and began and once you begin and once you have much understanding you have much you know you have uh, your your likelihood of not only man maintaining it but doing better after that is much higher so that generating a large pool a very large pool of entrepreneurs with without much risk at on their side was a very very important aspect and now people have started liking it and then at the same time there has been presence of Welcome Trust in India, supporting affordable healthcare. There is presence of the Gates Foundation in India. Um, there is presence of other social impact play and so on and so forth. So that presence and support has been the key in terms of you know, building at least some early momentum. I still would like to say, John, this is, you know, we are miles, miles away or behind 
one of the you know the one of the best systems around like san francisco or boston or cambridge or oxford and so on and so forth or london um, uh, but we are still i think it's a good traction that is being built here now mm, yeah Talk to me then about the actual new crop of scientist entrepreneur, because um, I mean, when I when I was uh, doing my PhD in postdoc studies, I think in most labs over here there was a very bright Indian student or a postdoc or something like that, and uh, it sort of occurred to me that it must be quite a brain drain on the country, actually. Um, and I know you hmm. yourself are educated in Germany in the Max Planck um, and understood uh, did further work in America. Are these entrepreneurs, startups coming from scientists returning home? Are they coming from a, a, an even better standard of education, do you think, in, in India? Yeah, I, think, I think this is an early lot. So India always uh, needed uh, a kind of a wave of entrepreneurs who actually begin to take risk and kind of become a role model. And that has been a key because, as you rightly said, there have always been you know, very good scientists who are possibly have gone abroad, get, got good training, became good postdocs, became principal investigators, became professors and so on, and some of them came back too. But entrepreneurship in science was always possibly not on. Even, even industrial scientific stint was considered not the best thing to do. Academia was always considered as the noblest thing to do because you have now knowledge and you should not make money out of your knowledge was the thought process. Uh, India has a very interesting way of looking at things. There is something called knowledge and there is something called uh, you know, uh, commercialization or something and they never thought that this could be together. So, and, and you know, there is a, a goddess of knowledge and there's a goddess of, uh, uh, you know, finance calls so goddess of knowledge is called lakshmi and uh, the saraswati and goddess of finance called lakshmi and they never thought that this it the for generations for centuries it was not considered as good thing to do so this is a mindset issue uh, the the long story short the answer largely is that uh, yes uh, very good scientists are coming up but they are not necessarily only academic scientists india is yet to see actually a good academic scientist lot that will take up uh, entrepreneurship i i definitely i had a word with somebody in delhi at the uh, planning body of the think tank of indian government and we are hoping to build something on it currently the lot that you possibly have heard of or i can share with you more is actually amazing scientists who have been around who were at astrazeneca who were at biocon who were there and they wanted to come out and do something risky after you know after possibly spending 20 25 years of their life in industry and that has been quite established yeah it's quite established science wise they are solid they have seen the procedures the global standards and so on and so forth and and, and it goes by that i mean it's it's um i mean just to go back to my probably introductory comment that you know cert certainly the standard of the science which we've seen uh has been really good in terms of like we kind of expected to see certain things like you know membrane drilling proteins and various things i expected to see them kind of sort of out of harvard or you know oxford cambridge or, you know you expect to see them so when i saw them sort of coming out of places and labs in india genuinely unique stuff i thought uh now the only thing i would say is that some of those scientists were educated abroad like i said so, so i'm wondering if uh you know it's still a really good idea for the the indian scientists the young scientists to actually go abroad and uh, spend time in you know japan or america and europe before coming home to avail of this new opportunity that the government is sort of providing um, no absolutely absolutely i agree and I, I think but i would say john is that it's bound to happen i have no doubt about that it's but it's a matter of time at the same time, it would not happen overnight because there's a very, see, the, the while individuals go out, uh, you know, some of them, if I may say so, they have been trained in such a solid system here that uh, they do get converted, but very few get converted when they are, when they see the other side, like the way I saw, I got exposed to UC Berkeley, UC 
San Francisco bio, bio innovation thing. I, I like those ideas. I say it's a phenomenal way to actually take science to the application, and I I firmly believe it now. But but and then I liked it as an individual doing that. At the same time, I think it will the good scientist or bad scientist or whatever it is. I think a larger population will get to it, but it's time because systems in India right now are still not as uh, porous in terms of immediately doing it. There are not as many people doing it. There are not as many role models around it at the mm -hmm. highest level to do that. There are people who are doing it. If you want numbers to say academic, on, my, my current concern, to be honest, is that, yes, if you want to put numbers and put statistics on somebody, you say, yes, 5% of academics are actually applying for these grants. But if you go by saying that, okay, let's make a cutoff and saying that, have people who have had one of the best publications of India, how many percentage of this, them are applying and you will come to 0 0.05 or even less. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what it would be. I think for really make a stunning uh, you know, impression on the Indian e innovation ecosystem, if one has to do so, one has to excite those guys somehow to actually come out and say, okay, I believe in this particular science, me or my postdoc will start it and we will have a spin-off which will be based, based on that. Yeah. And, yeah. and that something has to be, you know, uh, you know, encouraged to begin with. Mm, yeah, I think it's, and I don't think that's just India. I think there's a lot of countries with very good education systems, and particularly their elitist institutions are still, certainly the professors in them are still very slow about coming out or forming spin outs and still look look on uh, as, as some kind of failure to sort of want to, you know, start a company. Uh, All right. In terms of, um, I mean, you spent time in San Francisco. Um, what, that brings me to the subject of failure culture. I mean, this has been a big issue for us in Western Europe that, uh, you know, to start a company and fail is considered a pretty bad thing, whereas in America it was like worn like a badge of honor. What's failure culture like in India for the entrepreneur? Or do we know yet? So, um, yeah, so not in biotech, I would say not yet. Biotech is just seeing the the early log phase or early phase where the the numbers are going high and there will be a sustainability curve which would come after that and then there will be drop as well uh, when you take total numbers together and uh, there are to be honest there is significant amount of support which is available right now in india which would possibly you know allow a lot of them to float for now before they decide to close out in you know for lack of support lack of funding and so on and so forth yeah. so that don't feel, was, you don't feel it was sand against them sorry for cutting across you don't feel that uh, like having a failure of a startup i think up to a couple of years ago in, in paris europe would kind of stand against you when you when you go back to the well to try again whereas it was seen and i think it's seen more now as being a positive thing to have a go and fail you know what i mean that you learn something out of that uh, and this is something that, you know, in America has been, you know, it's had a very good failure culture for quite a long time. You get a feeling for that I, not in biotech, but in sort of entrepreneurship in general across India. No, absolutely. So I, I think that uh, if I were to believe, uh, if I were to predict really in terms of culture, what would happen, I would rather say it would happen where people would appreciate that somebody has done, gone through the grind once, twice and then has understanding of what may go wrong rather than somebody who's completely naive who has no understanding of possibilities of you know leakage from the tube per se mm -hmm. so if i i read because a lot of fundings uh, and the investors and so on are going to be common between us and india as well because they have there's a, a strong uh, us oriented culture which comes from investment in india uh, and because a lot of lps are from there and so on and so forth so I, if I were to predict, and I may be, it may be a good idea if India goes that way, where you say, no problem, you have failed, perfectly fine, but I think you've learned something, and now you have a new idea, let's support you for the new idea. Mm -hmm. So I, I would hope for that. Yeah. Do you, um, just since you mentioned uh, investors, I mean, what's the investment? I mean, it's one thing to have an investment community. It's another thing to have a significant amount of your investment community willing to invest in particularly early, early stage uh, biotech uh, or science startups. Um, what's the community look like over in India? Is it still very tech focused, for example? 
significantly tech focus, significantly tech focus, but uh, very keen to come to life sciences as well. Very keen. Uh, so while they would be strongly uh, tech focused at the same time, they are trying to see within the same fund if they can squeeze out one or two life sciences thing. And as you mentioned, I didn't go to that. If I may just you know digress back. Uh, okay. uh, uh, of, other than the affordable healthcare, the med tech and other things I mentioned, India will soon possibly, I, I would predict that I see an early good signs that India would have uh, what you call it as uh, a strong digital healthcare system as well, which would not necessarily be largely life science, life style oriented digital health, John, but I would say something that India need that would be last mile issue in terms of the bottom of the pyramid aspects because that would be somewhere where digital health would be you know humongously helpful in terms of reaching out for lack of personnel lack of infrastructure lack of investment uh, and the ai could actually be a big time useful in that okay um and also the announcement recently um that um Birak or the department of the department of biotechnology uh we're promising, I think it was 350, 370 million, can't remember the exact number, uh, towards these early stage startups in the in the next two years. Um, some people felt that wasn't high enough, it wasn't enough money. Um, do you, what do you think? Do you think it's enough money? I, I, I somehow missed that number. Uh, but, you know, so I have learned one thing, John, that uh, announcements, are one thing you have to see the real action as well. So I would, I, I, I do not know this announcement, uh, but 300 million is a significant amount of money for startups to you know actually do uh, for a couple of years. It's a really good amount of money uh, mm -hmm. in India because you can actually fail cheap in India. You can yeah. try many things and fail cheap because you do not have uh, the, your 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 sustenance doesn't require so much if you are smart. Uh, with compared to that, so it's good amount of money, but I would say that more than now, Bayrak. So Bayrak has definitely ignited, but a lot of things are coming up now. You can, it's just all around. So there's a a think tank. The, what I mentioned, it's called Niti Io in India, which has now began to you know uh, do similar things, but across sectors, uh, similar things of Bayrak, which supports incubator, provide early stage funding. And so on and so forth. So that's one. Then there is another department, just like Barak. There's another department called uh, DST, uh, and the arm that funds it's called NSTDB, National Science Technology Entrepreneurship Development Board. Uh, that has been doing it for last ten odd years. And I must say that I missed to say, but they have done the possibly also very interesting early stage, uh, you know, field plowing which possibly has helped a lot of people because they have set up possibly, if I'm not wrong on the numbers, around 50 to 80 incubators across India. And that has given the understanding of incubation and startups also. But it is also across across all sectors. Hmm. I don't know if, that, um, if this number escaped you, but what really struck me in the Nature Biotech article was that in recent years, it was something like 33% of the founders uh, were female. Mm -hmm. which is, uh, quite a high number, actually. Uh, I think a lot of countries would be love to get to that level uh, and beyond. It, it didn't kind of match with, I mean, you know, when, go, when uh, bodies are sort of doing their equality metrics for various countries, um, India often doesn't have quite as high a score as it possibly would like. And there's a lot of reasons behind that, the complex reasons. So um, it was hard for me to square such a kind of a, a good number from female founders on, uh, with that. Um, would, yeah, would I guess. That's that number? Yeah, yeah. So I, I would largely, uh, I would not be surprised with that number, to be honest. And I'll tell you, John, the reason for it. Uh, when we talk about uh, the gender equality at many places, uh, uh, a lot of those things is largely system based, you know, where the system doesn't allow, uh, you know, the equality to come in. It could be in an academic zone, it could be an industry, it could be this. What has happened and the way it has happened is that 
the entire phenomena of five to six years is more or less is not a kind of a, a bureaucracy or a process driven aspect. It has allowed individuals directly to reach out to a potential funder on website, share the idea, experts see the idea, respond to the idea, have the presentation and get funded. It has allowed not only gender equality, but it has also allowed in terms of the elite, you know, elite versus non so elite background equality. Mm -hmm. It has always been a case uh, at many places across the world as well as in India. Uh, where if you do not come with that background, you may not be good at all. And that has also been broken because the process has not allowed anybody to play that uh, either a, a gender or a, you know somebody who backs you or somebody who supports you and somebody who says, oh, I'm affiliated with this, that's why I should be supported, which also makes a huge case at many places. So because of that, where you have completely, uh, there are no layers which would break, you know, bring you down, where I, according to me, women like possibly, um, you know, uh, Sang, Dr. Sangmitra, Nusrat, and mm -hmm. others who have directly approached those, uh, you know, the funding agency has then gotten support. And on a sheer presence, uh, the ability of their individual ability to go and test their ideas. Mm -hmm. and, and that, because of that, I think is, and there are several more, there are people like, in our setup, if you, John, if you ever get a chance to come to Bangalore, you're very more, more than welcome to visit CCAM. Um, in our setup, there are huge numbers of women scientists who have done because that allows them a flexibility. Entrepreneurship allows them flexibility, which is not there in many cases. Uh, and you are not, and you are not playing the, uh, you know, a tag of uh, this Ivy League college or a tag of this particular thing. You are, you are, you are individual. Your science thought process individual please test me on my science thought process and say whether I'm good or bad. And then that's where it hands. And that's a very good way to approach it according to me. Great, thank you very much. Um, sorry, I just have one last question. So I suppose just to finish this up, I mean, what do you think is really needed now in India, whether from the government or from any other sector to really sort of drive these ambitions forward? What's still if missing? I, yeah, what if I were to pick one is, uh, as I said, uh, a very high level of academic entrepreneurship, where the real good deep ideas come out, which which and which has to happen. There is no way it would not happen. Is that we have to shorten the time for that. So that is one. What also needs to happen is much better regulatory aspects, which are clearer, transparent in manner, and so on and so forth. Uh, and the third aspect, which uh, uh, these are the all ecosystems. Third aspects are, uh, you know, possibly other small acts, like which would allow. So there is uh, in in India there is a biodiversity act, which uh, more or less says that one cannot commercialize um, any bio resources, any bio resources, be it plants, vegetables. Um, you have microbes, you have anything that you talk about without a permission and definitely not by a foreign agency. Mm -hmm. So that's a very, uh, you know, restrictive. So few things like this at the policy level. And one thing where on the ground has to happen is this. And fourth, if I may add, because I may have many, is that true blue life science funding investors in India are not there. Mm -hmm. They're working on their own. That is also needed, which is there in San Diego, which is there in Boston, San Francisco, and other geographies, but they are not there here. They are there in Oxford, Cambridge, so on and so forth, but not here. They're mm -hmm. working on it. It's, it's a mindset. They're working on it to say that they don't miss the bus. They're, they are not working because they should do it. They're working because they don't want to miss the bus. And mm -hmm. that's where it is. So we have really good examples from CCAMP at least, and I, I sh shared six or seven names in my one email. And those, all of them have done very well where their valuations have been able to go really high, which, which has attracted others now to you know, build something. Thank you very much for talking to us today. It's been it's really a pleasure. And uh, thank you again. Great to connect. Absolutely. Take care. Bye-bye.